Hey guys, this is Josh Lindsay here, um, the worship leader here at White Dove Ministries. And uh, I'd like to take just a few minutes and share with you uh, something that God's been speaking to my heart about. And uh, I'd like to begin with a very familiar scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Most of you could quote it with me. But it says that I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And uh, I begin to ask myself this question, you know, what does the gospel mean to me? And I would ask you that same question. What is the gospel? When you hear the word the gospel, what do you think of? You know, many people may think of the first four books of the Bible as the gospel. You know, we think of Sunday school, you know, the flannel graph, seeing <laughs> pictures of Jesus stuck to a, a flannel board. And we hear the stories of what Jesus did, or how he, his death, burial, and resurrection, how we can have eternal life. And uh, for many people, their concept of the gospel starts and stops with being born again. And that's all they know. And, and in our culture today, I feel like we have a very shallow view of salvation because uh, most of us are concerned with being right and not as much concerned with being whole. You know, how many of you have ever been a, in an argument with someone and you just weren't going to let it go until they knew that you were right? You know, I've done that. We've all done that. But see, in that instance, we're not letting peace be our guide. We're letting pride get in the way. And, and what I'm trying to say is most of us treat God that way. We, we really say a prayer because we want to know that He's okay with us. We want to know that when our time comes, He's going to let us into heaven, you know, things like that. Or we want other people to know that we're a right, we're good, we're in right standing, or we're righteous. But I, I want to submit to you that God is more concerned with our wholeness than He is with us just being right. And I think that if you were to search out the word salvation, you would find out that the word there is, is it's, it's manifold. It ha it's a word that means not just to be born again and have eternal security, but it means, you know, salvation to the entire person, body, soul, and spirit. And I want you to know that in the gospel, there's power, power for transformation, power for your destiny, power for maturity. Uh, you know, we hear Paul Keith talk a lot about in our SOS meetings and other places, you know, mature sons of God or the bride of Christ, you know, uh, apostolic authority. We hear a lot about the, the full revelation of Jesus Christ. And I want to submit to you that all of those things are the gospel. When Jesus came preaching and teaching, he came preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom, the message of the kingdom. And all these things are available to us in Christ. It's like this. When we see Christ as our Savior, we hear that word and faith is awakened in our heart and we believe and we're born again. Well, I want to submit to you that every other experience in the Christian life comes the same way. We hear about Christ. Jesus is our healer. Faith is awakened and healing comes. Okay? We hear that Christ is our maturity. He really is. He's our righteousness, our justification. And in the same way, we hear that word and faith is awakened. Another familiar scripture we all know very well. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, another way you can translate that is faith is awakened when we hear the message, the message of the God or the gospel, the message of what Jesus has done, the message of who he is and what he is for us. I want you to know today that if your concept of the gospel is shallow, then your concept of your destiny will be shallow because your destiny is found in the gospel. The Bible says in Luke 4, 18, where Jesus stood up and he told all the people that he came to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captive, to the recovery of sight to the blind, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Those, those are things that minister to the entire person, every need from start to finish. That's the gospel. So I would encourage you today, if you need, let the Lord tweak you a little bit about your concept of what the gospel is. Because the gospel, as the Bible says, is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. We're thankful for the many things, the many expressions in the body of Christ. But it's the gospel that brings transformation. And I think it's interesting that of all the things that he could have used and said, those were the words he chose. Well, we're thankful for prophecy. We're thankful for all these other things, visions, encounters. Those things are wonderful. But Paul said that the gospel is the power of God to salvation. 
That means that, that that power for transformation is available to every person, and it's available to you today by simple trust in Jesus. I want to leave you with this one thought. Galatians chapter 3. Paul rebuked the church in Galatia, and he said, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? He told them, Did I not present the crucified Christ to you clearly enough? And I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but he goes on to say that having begun in the Spirit, are you now trying to perfect yourself in the flesh? See, Paul knew that the entire Christian experience is from faith to faith to faith. You were born again by faith. Okay? You're going to mature and grow by that same faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus. The full revelation of Jesus Christ. The full disclosure of who He is. The full disclosure of what He's done. The full disclosure of what that means for you. So, this, this may be things that you've heard before. This may be something new to you. But I would encourage you to think on these things. And if you need, let the Holy Spirit deal with you and tweak you a little bit about what the gospel really is. Because in this time, in this day, we need to stand up and not be ashamed of the gospel. Because like Paul said, that's where the power is. And when we release that message, power is released for transformation. And I believe that when we hear that word and receive it in our heart, that power is made real for our lives. So I just want to believe with all my heart that you're going to hear this message, hear this word, and something's going to awaken in you that you can do this. You can believe this. You can mature. You can be a mature son or daughter of God. You can, you can be a part of the bride. You can have the full revelation of Jesus because it's the word of God. It's the gospel message. It's Jesus Christ himself. And all you have to do is look to him and put your trust in Him. So, I hope this word is ministered to you, and I hope that you'll take these thoughts and really pray on them, and allow the Holy Spirit to work them into your heart. Amen.